Hej Flemming. Hej Mikkel. Uh, Snart skal du se jer her. Flemming uh, is the last person to arrive in the Danish Order Group design team. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, really to expand our our visions and our views and our capabilities. I've always admired Fleming's work and uh, we have known each other from the past. Uh, we share a lot of common interests, fly fishing being one of them. So it was a real, uh, real pleasure that this opportunity came and uh, we've had some splendid times and we'll have some more, I think. Yeah. One thing that really sets us apart, in, in my humble view, is that you're an artist and I'm an engineer. So I have this tendency to make very uh, square minimalistic uh, designs. You have a wilder side. I think sometimes my creative mind has been influenced very much about the tools that I had to work with. I mean, I have never ever thought of things like copper and you know all the material your universe is filled with products i couldn't even spend them you know <laughs> that's and it's fascinating because as i get to know your universe um your insight in materials and your insight in what is possible is also opening uh things that are inspiring to me and so because i would say oh Okay, all right. Can we do that? <laughs> so it's very it works both ways. It really does. It's just on different levels. Um, I, I think that the, the fun part or the really even if we have all this technology, all the cat and everything, then then our our work together is basically still on your notepad. We meet uh afternoon coffees in Aarhus. Yeah. And then we <laughs> then we uh, talk about things, and then we look at things, yeah. uh, and then uh, Fleming brings out his little black book. He <laughs> said, "By the way, I have a few ideas." <laughs> yeah. And and then the process is that when Fleming uh, saws these small seeds, then pretty soon it gets into a a, a, a cat uh, setup where there is a rendering, there is a a, a, a visualization of. The idea I saw in the notepad or in the notebook, mm-hmm. and then I asked Fleming, "Is this what you're thinking?" Yeah. And then we start the iteration process. And, and that's really a key element, I think, in, in the difference between differences between you and I, and why we can complement each other because you have this theoretical background. I look at it more like an artist. I get fascinated by the material, and I actually think with myself. Oh man, you have to find an excuse to use this for something. Yeah, <laughs> because you really want to use it because it, it it speaks to you, you know, and and that's where the dialogue becomes interesting because I would choose copper uh, because I like the color of the of the of the metal. Yeah, but you know a lot of different benefits from copper rather than just the cosmetics. Yeah. If we if we look at uh, if we look at the 880 series from the beginning, it was pretty much a study in shape. Yeah. But it became pretty much also a study of materials, and I think that the amplifiers that we are going to introduce uh, later this year, yeah, uh, hopefully at Munich with everything going well, mm-hmm. um, is is a very much a result of that. I think what is helping us in the way that you and I work together is that. I am from the business. Yeah, I actually. know something about the manufacturing of the products. Exactly. So I try to get crazy ideas, but I never get an idea that does not serve the purpose, and that is impossible to make. Exactly, and and, 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 and we already knew that when we started the eight eighty dis- discussions yeah. and designs that we had, it was a class A thing. So we needed to have ample cooling. There were some already predefined yeah. boxes to work with it. Yeah. And I, but I think that your idea with the three C through H heat shrinks <laughs> was quite quite astonishing and quite amazing. And of course yeah. I could see that right away. So it was quite easy to go on from there. Yeah. But I also think that sometimes perhaps I can provoke you 
in a way that, I mean, you could take this and then I could ask you, why don't, why can't we do it like that? Exactly. I also think that, I mean, there are lots of good designers out there and there's a lot of them that are better than I. I mean, you see beautiful chairs, you can't sit in them. And beautiful lamps, you can't read a book with them because the design does not serve the purpose and the guy who designed it did not think above the design or beyond the design. You know? And that's why we, when in our dialogue, we actually get to the understanding very, very fast. I agree. Being an engineer, mm -hmm. everything that square is good. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I have a, a, a very much like uh, this uh, approach to to design that it is a private thing between us, mm -hmm. but it's also important that the company knows and the company buys into things. So when we're done with the first iteration of renderings, I start showing them around in the company. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes have been this, uh, uh, this, this thing that I, I made some designs early on and then I, I, I almost finished it and, uh, and, and then I showed it to somebody and said, can't you see that this dimension is a little bit off? Mm -hmm. The proportions are not quite right. And then I have to redo everything all over again. Yeah. And, and most often when these critical voices set a, a vision on things, then I see them. And I also have this good practice thing about designing something almost to a ready state and then letting the things lie for maybe two or three months mm -hmm. and then revisit and say, is that is, is absolutely still flying? Is, yeah. is, is it still okay? Yeah. But as with everything, maybe 90% of what we test, we said, no, that was wrong. But we're getting better and better to, to find sort of like the elements that really, really work. Most often when we, we, we find uh, some of the materials we use for coatings and stuff like that, it's because we have actually touched them. Yeah. And it seems like every time you get into a material that is nice to the touch, then it's also good for sound. That's and an interesting comparison. So do you think the product, the material has a soul? I am not, I don't think it has a soul per se. <laughs> but 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 everything has a tone. Yeah. Um, even if you go knock on your window, that glass you mm -hmm. you can hear it's glass. Mm -hmm. But if the window is big, the tone coming from it, the fundamentals are quite deep. Yeah. But still, you know you have that brittle glass sound into it. Sure. And it's the same with the chassis for an amplifier, a chassis uh, for a speaker, or a cabinet for a speaker, and that resonance, that tone must be sympathetic. So the shielding uh, part, uh, the what we have learned about uh, copper, and that's why we use massive uh, thick slabs of copper on the heat sink, is mm -hmm. that when you put output transistors on copper rather than aluminium, they simply get lower output impedance. Inductance is no longer an issue. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's beneficial for the damping factor of an amplifier. It's beneficial for the amplifier running cool. It's beneficial in so many aspects. It's uh, yeah. really unbelievable. So when you came here today, you saw the eight eighty chassis mm -hmm. cabinets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you like that? That was the first time I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think there has been a, a little change from when we started because we wanted it to be a piece of art yeah. where the copper had its life. Yeah. And, and we have a few of those cabinets where copper has, have, have, has not been treated in any way apart from being glass blasted. Yeah. So over time it will grow old and get brownish and tanned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and then we get some samples where we have the copper has been uh, uh, passivated in a way that the fingers will not uh, <laughs> stain it. It's, it's funny, as we get older, we start to appreciate patina more. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. How did you perceive it? Did it follow? Did, you, did it look like you were, were expecting? I need to see the front on it. Yeah. Uh, but the, um, the design we, we made with the, with the cooling on the side, I think that works really, really, really nice. Yeah, me too. I think, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. 
I should say so. And the mono version is going to be even greater. <laughs>